It's about my sudden desire to become a nun when I was a teenager. The Catholic school I attended had an annual event of a movie viewing. One year, the school selected a movie about Jesus Christ's life. In the final scene, Jesus looked straight at me, which I mean was straight at the camera, and said, I am with you always. That line startled me. For the first time, I realized he was always with me and I was touched by the thought. Tears were rolling down my cheeks. I had a hard time to see the stairs on my way out of the movie theater because of my tears and to hide them from my friends at the same time. I had been exposed to the Christian teachings routinely through a Bible class and a daily morning prayer at school. Yet, I had never thought about it deeply like this before. As a teenager, I had believed that nothing good would ever happen to me in the future and I would have to endure a life in the prison-like world. I had constantly felt lonely and hopeless. But what if Jesus was always beside me? I wondered how helpful it would be. Although I had had numerous bad incidents with nuns at school and been unable to get along well with them, I felt like I understood a fraction of the reason why they became nuns. Imagining being a nun can be much closer to Jesus, I suddenly wanted to be one. I talked about it casually to my best friend and she burst into laughter as she thought it was my new joke. I had told her seriously for days but that was even funnier to her. My decision to be a nun hadn't changed after one week, and at last I dared to tell my mother about it. She just flatly said, you're too curious and tempting about sexual matters to be a nun. Her remark was right enough for me to come to my senses and think better of it. Audiobook, Japanese Dream by Hitomi Woods on sale at online stores or apps. Apple, Audible, Google Play, Nook Audiobooks, 43 available distributors in total. Inside a cabinet in the old house where I grew up and spent much of my childhood, there was a beautiful music box. It stood out by its glamour and westernized style among other articles of Japanese folk art in the cabinet. My mother took it out once or twice a year for me, solemnly and carefully as a special occasion. She would wind up, open the lid slowly and let me listen to its heavenly melody. It was the first gift she received from my father when they were young. The tune was Truomarai by Schumann. I asked my father what the title meant and he told me it meant rosy happiness although I later learned it actually meant dreaming. I imagined that he felt rosy happiness when he was marrying her. Since the music box was expensive, my mother strictly forbade me to touch it. I wasn't allowed to play it on my own. My parents were usually out for work and I was suffering from auto-intoxication when I was little. I often fainted while I was playing alone at home and my grandmother had to call a doctor each time. In those days, my secret remedy was sneak open the cabinet and take out the music box. While my mother believed it was a once or twice a year occasion, I listened to it almost every day. Although by then I had already known that my parents got married by an arranged marriage for each family's convenience and my mother especially married money, it helped me delude myself that my parents loved each other. By listening to the tune, I felt hopeful and had fewer blackouts from auto intoxication. When I lived in the city before moving in here, I had an idea that I would play True Mariah on the piano for my parents on their wedding anniversary. I practiced playing it by listening to a Schumann CD. But my rare respectable attempt never materialized after all for a strange reason. Every time I practiced true marai, a cockroach appeared from somewhere as if it was a cue. It was impossible to continue practicing because I have a strong phobia about roaches. Audiobook, Japanese Dream by Hitomi Woods on sale at online stores or apps. Apple, Audible, Google Play, Nook Audiobooks, 43 available distributors in total.